بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ہیلو اینڈ ویلکم ٹو لیکچر نمبر ٹویلو آف ڈیفرینشیل جیومیٹری لاسٹ لیکچر میں ہم نے فرین فارمولا کے بارے میں دیکھا تھا اور فرین فریم فیلڈ کے بارے میں پڑھا تھا اور اس کے بعد ہم نے لاسٹ میں ایک ایگزیمپل کی تھی جس میں ہم نے یونٹ ٹینجنٹ ویکٹر یونٹ بائی نارمل ویکٹر اور یونٹ نارمل ویکٹر کیلکولیٹ کیے تھے اور فرین فارمولاز کو ہم نے اپلائی کر کے اس کیس میں ہم نے کرویچر اور ٹارشن کو کیلکولیٹ کیا تھا آج کے لیکچر میں ہم یہ دیکھیں گے کہ فرین فارمولاز کو یوز کر کے ہم کرو کی اپروکسیمیشن کیسے کر سکتے ہیں کوئی بھی اگر کرو گیون ہو اس کی ہم نے اپروکسیمیشن فائنڈ آؤٹ کرنی ہے تو ہم فرین فارمولاز کو یوز کر کے یہ کیسے فائنڈ آؤٹ کر سکتے ہیں اس کے بعد ہم یہ دیکھیں گے کہ کرو کی پراپرٹیز کو کیسے ڈیرائیو کیا جا سکتا ہے فار اگزامپل اگر کسی کرو کا کرویچر کانسٹنٹ ہے تو اس کا کیا مطلب ہے اور اگر کوئی کرو ہے جس کا ٹارشن زیرو ہے تو اس کا کیا مطلب ہے ان تمام پراپرٹیز کو ہم ڈسکس کریں گے اور ڈیفینیٹلی یہ تمام چیزیں جو ہیں تب ہی پاسیبل ہیں اگر ہمارے پاس فرین فارمولاز ہیں اور فرین فریم فیلڈ ہے سب سے پہلے جس چیز کا ہم آج کے لیکچر میں یوز کریں گے وہ ہے کہ ہاؤ ٹو فائنڈ ایکویجن آف اے پلین اور ان ادر ورڈز تھری ڈی میں اور اسپیس میں اور آر تھری میں ایک پلین ہے اس کو ہم کیسے ڈیفائن کر سکتے ہیں سو ہاؤ ڈو وی ڈیفائن اے پلین سو اے پلین از ڈٹرمنڈ بائی سو نمبر ون تھری نان کولینئر پوائنٹس سو اگر کوئی بھی تھری نان کولینئر پوائنٹس ہیں تھری ڈی میں تو اٹ ول ڈٹرمن اے یونیک پلین دیٹس ون تھنگ سیکنڈلی آئی کین ڈیفائن اے پلین بائی ٹو انفارمیشنس ون اے پوائنٹ آن دا پلین اینڈ دا سیکنڈ تھنگ از اے لائن اور اے ویکٹر پر پینڈیکولر ٹو دا پلین سو فار ایگزامپل ان دس پکچر آئی ہیو دس ویکٹر کیو وچ از پر پینڈیکولر ٹو دا پلین and this is the point P which is on the plane so given these two informations given a point P and a vector Q I can define uniquely so this plane is uniquely determined by P and Q so uniquely determined means there is only one plane which contains point P and perpendicular to the vector Q there is no other plane in R3 which satisfies this condition that containing the point P and perpendicular to Q so how to write down this factor so let's say R koi bhi arbitrary point hai plane ke upar ok so this vector P R this lies in the plane and if it lies in the plane then it will be perpendicular to this vector q so as you can see in this picture that if i have a line p r then it will be perpendicular to the vector q so p r dot q must be equal to zero so p r the vector p r dot product with the vector q must be equal to zero and this implies that r minus p dot q is equal to zero because what is p r so let's calculate what is p r so p r vector is equal to the position vector of r minus the position vector of p so that's how you calculate a vector with initial point p and final point r o r minus o p so what is o r this is r vector and what is o p so we can just say that the position vector of capital P is small p so this is the position vector of P so this is equal to R minus P dot Q is equal to 0 so that's how you define a plane in 3D so is cheese ko hum use kar rahe honge so in short given a point on the plane and a vector perpendicular to the plane I can define uniquely a plane in three space and the equation 
of the plane is given by set of all points R such that R minus P dot Q is equal to 0 and this P and Q are given. So next thing which we are going to use in our lecture is Taylor series. Now what is Taylor series? So roughly speaking if I have a function f of x which is infinitely differentiable means its first derivative exists kar hai, second b third fourth up to so on its ke tamam ke tamam derivatives exist kar rahe hain then the functional values of f of x near x is equal to 0 so for example if i have uh, a very small neighborhood of 0 so and x is any point inside this interval so this interval is very small very very small interval then in the neighborhood of x is equal to 0 the functional values are given by f of 0 plus df by dx at 0 into x plus d square f by dx square at 0 into x square by 2 plus d cube f by dx cube at 0 x cube by 3 factorial plus up to so on infinite terms hai isme it's a series or is tamam series ka sum kya hai hamare paas this is f of x now the point is agar main in tamam infinite terms mein se kuch finite terms le lu let's say main first 10 terms le lu then it will not be equal to f of x then we can say that f of x is approximately equal to let's say my first three terms later on so f prime of 0 into x plus f double prime of 0 into x square by 2 plus f triple prime of 0 into x cube by 3 factorial and that's it my other first three terms later then I can say that f of x is approximately equal to this or it's a relatively good approximation because x is very very small or agar koi bohut shota number hai aur uski mein jaise jaise powers lunga x is to power 4, 5, 6 up to so on to iski value kam hoti jayegi so agar maine first three terms li hai it's still a very good approximation because I have ignored minor terms because x is small so x to the power 4 is very very small x to the power 5 is very 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 small up to so on so I just ignore the small terms and ignore the small and the big terms I have so f of x is approximately equal to the sum of these first three terms for example if I have sin x so let's say f of x is sin x so how to calculate the Taylor series so what is f prime of x so f prime of x is equal to cosine x what is f double prime of x is equal to minus sin x what is f triple prime of x is equal to minus cosine x up to so on hum sir first three terms calculate karte so let's say around 0 my Taylor series calculate kar rahun. so what is f of 0 so f of 0 is 0 in this case f prime of 0 is 1 in this case f double prime of 0 is 0 again and f triple prime of 0 is minus 1 in this case so is terms mein f of x case expression mein in terms ko hum rakhne. so sin x equals to 0 f of 0 is 0 plus f prime of 0 into x so plus x f double prime 0 is 0 so do see term yaan se 0 ge plus f triple prime is minus 1 so into minus 1 x cube by 3 factorial up to so on so sin x is equal to x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus x to the power 5 by 5 factorial minus x to the power 7 by 7 factorial up to so on so if you calculate karna chahe, to aap easily calculate kar sakte hain. I can leave this as an exercise that this happens 
Now, if I take the first term, so if I just take this first term, or baki tamam terms ko main ignore kar dun. Then of course, sin x is approximately equal to x. And it's a very bad approximation, kyunki maine kafi zyada terms ko, kafi zyada jo important terms thi, x to the power 3, x to the power 5, or in tamam terms ko maine ignore kar diya. So, as you can see in this picture, ki ye sin x ka graph hai mere paas, ye jo bold line hai, bold red line is sin x. और इसमें ये जो ग्रीन लाइन है ये x है y is equal to x so this approximation uh, and you can see that sin x का behavior और graph और है और इस लाइन का graph और है लेकिन अगर मैं इसमें एक और टर्म ऐड कर लूँ minus x cube by 3 factorial so एक और टर्म ऐड करने के बाद आप देख सकते हैं कि graph का जो behavior है वो change होना शुरू हो जाएगा so it becomes this and it's more close to sine. Similarly, agar mein isme ek or term add karlu, x is to power 5 by 5 factorial, then as you can see that it's more close, it's more close to sine x. Up to so on, agar mein ek or term add karlu, x is to power 7, 7 factorial with a negative sign, then you can see that now it's very very close. This term p7x which is 1, 2, 3, 4, the first four terms of the Taylor series of sin x, it is very, very close to sin x. So, we can see that it's a very good approximation of sin x. So, Taylor series is very good in approximating the functional values. Once again, the same reason, because x is very small, and if it is small, then I can ignore higher powers ko easily, ignore kar sakta hun, and it will not affect the functional value because for small x the higher powers are very small so is cheez ko hum use karenge aaj aur ye dekhenge ke taylor series can be written in terms of the frene frame aur agar aapne usko frene frame mein likh liya hai then it is very useful and uh, ye hum dekhenge ke how it is useful so what is the aim so one of the aim of today's lecture is to approximate a curve near an arbitrary point on the curve. So koi si bhi curve given hai humare paas. Humne ek koi sa ek point le lena. Let's say this is point on the curve. So this is point on the curve. Aur mujhe approximate karna hai ke mein exact curve ko nahi calculate karna cha raha. Exactness sometimes is not possible. बहुत ज़्यादा प्रैक्टिकल ऐसी सिचुएशंस हैं जिसमें एक्जैक्ट वैल्यू कैलकुलेट करना या तो बहुत टाइम टेकिंग होता है आप इतना टाइम नहीं लगाना चाह रहे होते या फिर यह कि इम्पॉसिबल होता है सो इट्स ऑलवेज यूजफुल टू अप्रॉक्सीमेट समथिंग सो इस केस में हम कर्व की जो पोजिशन है उसको अप्रॉक्सीमेट करेंगे सो लेट से ये जो रेड डॉट है मेरे पास ये कोई फंक्शनल वैल्यू है और मैं किसी वे से किसी मेथड से ये पॉइंट फाइंड आउट करूंगा विच इज वेरी वेरी क्लोज टू दिस पॉइंट और ये इस पॉइंट को मैं कहूंगा दिस इज अप्रोक्सीमेशन ऑफ द पॉइंट ऑन द कर्व सो ये आज हम देखेंगे सो हाउ टू डू दिस सबसे पहले हमने टेलर सीरीज को देखा वट इज टेलर सीरीज और टेलर सीरीज को हम यूज करेंगे उसके बाद फ्रेन ए फ्रेम एट ए पॉइंट को हम यूज करेंगे to write down the Taylor series in terms of the Frenet frame or definitely Frenet formulas we have used karenge in tamam ke combination ke saath at the end humare paas ek aisi Taylor series approximation a jayegi jo ke written hogi in terms of Frenet frame field ab iska faida kya hoga iska ek sab se bada faida to ye hoga ke we can in fact write down the approximation in terms of the thing that we understand so we understand what is curvature, we understand what is torsion, and we understand what is normal vector, binormal vector, and tangent vector. So we understand all of these quantities. So if we have the Taylor series ko lick diya in terms of these geometric information about the curve. So approximate kar rahe hai hum curve ko in terms of the geometric information of the curve. 
So what is geometric information? Again, this is torsion, curvature, normal, binormal, tangent, up to so on. So let's begin with the process. So uh, is blue box me up the exact I'm the Taylor series job the key. Now let beta is a unit speed curve just like in the last lecture maybe Kata or Aj Kaja lecture hai. it's a continuation of the last lecture to hum unit speed curves ko discuss kar rahe iske baad next lecture mein hum ye dekhenge ke how we can do the same calculation the same process for arbitrary curves instead of just unit speed curves so we can approximate each of the functions now we know that each of this function beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 so these are functions so beta i are functions from r to r so these are real valued functions of one variable so um the dekha ke jo taylor series hai wo bhi function of one variable ki baat kar rahi hai so we can easily apply the taylor series on this beta i's so what is the approximation without going into the detail of Taylor series again so may easily lick up down first three terms like here many Taylor series key or what is the first term f of 0 so beta i f 0 second term is f prime 0 into s so beta i prime 0 into s so beta prime or d beta i by ds so plus beta i double prime at 0 into s square by 2 plus d cube beta i by d s cube at 0 s cube by 3 factorial. So this is the approximate value of this real valued function. So we can do this thing for beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3. So now I can write down this beta as beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 and I can write down the approximation in the following way. So let's just write down the first two terms and uh, beta 1 of 0 plus beta 1 prime of 0 s plus let's let's write down all of the terms so to avoid confusion we are writing down all of the terms s square by 2 plus beta triple prime 0 beta 1 triple prime 0 s cube by 3 factorial so this is the beta 1 part similarly beta 2 0 plus beta 2 prime 0 into s plus beta 2 double prime 0 s square by 2 plus beta triple prime 0 s cube by 3 factorial and plus the third part so we can write down easily that this is equal to so which means beta is equal to so uh, we, this is basically not exact value this is approximate value because I'm approximating beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 with this approximations so this is approximately equal to so beta 1 of 0 beta 2 of 0 and beta 3 of 0 plus s into beta 1 of 0 prime beta 2 of 0 prime beta 3 of 0 prime plus the second terms s square by 2 beta 1 double prime of 0 plus beta 2 double prime of 0 sorry this is not plus beta 3 triple prime of 0 plus up to so on so I can write down 
in terms of these coordinate form. So what is this? This is beta of 0 plus s. What is this? This is beta prime of 0 plus what is this? s squared by 2. This is beta double prime of 0 up to so on. So a third term last me I give us. So in coordinate form we can write down that this beta which is equal to beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 is approximately equal to we are not writing down it is exactly equal to this is approximately equal to beta of 0 plus s beta prime of 0 plus s square by 2 beta double prime of 0 plus s cube by 3 factorial beta triple prime of 0 and that's it we are just taking the first four terms of the Taylor series approximation of beta i our first four terms हमने लिए हैं beta one beta two beta three के लिए जो के coordinates हैं beta के और उसके बाद हमने coordinates में इनकी values put कर दी हैं और जैसा कि हमने अभी देखा that this is equal to this expression so beta s is approximately equal to this curve so this is also a curve because beta of zero is a point in 3D beta prime of zero is a point in 3D beta double prime of 0 is a point on 3D beta triple prime of 0 is a point on 3D is the mom ko add karenge you will get a point in 3D so beta of s which is a curve in space is approximately equal to this curve so this is not exactly equal to beta of s ki approximation hai ye so let's say ye humare paas koi curve hai beta of s then when you calculate these values beta of 0 plus s beta prime of 0 up to so on ye, ye in the expressions ko calculate karenge jab aap, then it will give you a curve and it will be kind of approximation of the curve so some point pe ye exactly equal hogi some point pe ye nahi hogi or some point pe ye so it will be something like this so this is the approximation and once again why we do the approximation because sometimes it's not at all possible to calculate the curve exactly and sometimes it's only required to calculate the approximate value it's only useful so we don't want to calculate the exact value so approximation is always required in practical situations so that's how we can approximate this is the exact curve and we can approximate it with this expression. Now we are going to understand what is this approximation. Just like we saw in the sin x example, if I take the first four terms, le lu, first four non-zero terms, le lu, then it's a very good approximation of sin x. Similarly, this, these three terms, four terms, are very good approximation of the curve. अब हम इस चीज को अंडरस्टैंड करने की कोशिश करते हैं कि अगर ये अच्छी अप्रॉक्सिमेशन है कर्व की तो इससे कर्व की जो ज्योमेट्रिकल प्रॉपर्टीज हैं वो कैसे डिराइव की जा सकती हैं उनका इस अप्रॉक्सिमेशन के साथ क्या रिलेशनशिप है व्हाट इज कर्वेचर फ्रॉम हियर व्हाट इज कर्वेचर सो हाउ टू कैलकुलेट हाउ टू डिसाइड कर्वेचर is it possible that we can decide the curvature of the curve from this approximation? Is it possible that you can, we can find the torsion of the curve from, these, from this approximation of the curve? And is it possible to calculate tangent normal and binormal of the curve from this approximation? So all the geometrical properties that we have studied so far, what are the relationships between those geometrical properties and this approximation of the curve so that's our next target so first hum is cheez ko likhne ki koshish karte hain is approximation ko likhne ki koshish karte hain in terms of the frenet frame field so let's see so this is just a reminder of the frenet frame field so as i said in my last lecture it's always useful to remember this matrix instead of the frenet formula so, 
in the first line that's the approximation of the curve or uh, as we can see that given any point s I will get an approximation so it depends on s so just just s change over curve ke upar points change honge aur ye approximation bhi aap dekh sakte hain ki this depends on s so it's a curve with parameter s which is approximation of the curve beta so starting from the definition of the tangent so what is tangent so tangent is basically beta prime of s and uh, remember remember we are assuming that the curve is a unit speed curve and if the curve is unit speed curve in this case only beta prime is the tangent and we will see in the next lecture that how it changes for the curves which are not unit speed curve so this gives beta prime of 0 is equal to t of 0 and uh, in short we can write it down as t of 0 so the value of the tangent at point s is equal to 0 can be written as t underscore t not okay so we can also write down t prime so what is t prime t prime by frenet formula so from here t prime is equal to kappa into n so kappa into n and this implies so what is t prime t prime is basically beta double prime because what is t t is equal to so t is equal to beta prime what is t double t prime sorry what is t prime this is equal to beta double prime so this is equal to beta double prime is equal to kappa n s so just maine t prime ki jagah beta double prime rakh diya because t prime is beta double prime okay what is next so next is beta double prime of 0 is equal to kappa of 0 into n of 0 so n of 0 means so we know that this n is normal vector what is normal vector is ki definition the last lecture mein ki thi but uh, we know that we know that normal vector at a point gives me a vector a normal vector can be calculated at each and every point on the curve so it's a vector field on the curve so normal vector field so what is the normal vector at point s is equal to 0 this is n of 0 and if i change this value if i change 0 to another point let's say t or 100 or 10 it will give me another vector which is normal to the curve at an other point so this is the one of the vectors of the normal vector field and so this is equal to beta not double prime is equal to kappa 0 so once again kappa of 0 ko we are writing down in short kappa of 0 into n not so once again in short we are writing this down so what we have got so we have got beta prime of 0 is t not so let's write it down so this is basically t not and what is beta prime so beta prime we calculated this is k not which is kappa not and n not now what is left this is the question mark now and we are going to calculate what is beta triple prime of 0 in terms of the frene frame field or in terms of the frene frame and in terms of torsion and curvature and other geometrical properties of the curve we have studied so far so to calculate beta double prime of 0 so we use leibniz rule so what is leibniz rule so leibniz rule is so we have seen that what is beta double prime what is beta double prime it's basically t prime and what is t prime this is equal to kappa n so once again from this frenet formulas t prime is equal to kappa n okay so what is beta triple prime so beta triple prime is equal to d t prime by d s which is equal to d k kappa divided by d s and uh, using the product rule 
or Leibniz rule this is equal to dk by ds and remember this k depends on s the curvature depends on the point agar point mein different lunga to mere paas curvature bhi different aayega curve ka or similarly the normal vector hai, it also depends on s so for different value or different point on the curve i will get a different value of n so both of these quantities depends on s so in the product rule we will get d kappa by ds into n plus kappa dn by ds and so by applying the Fresnel formulas we get n prime so this is n prime so n prime is equal to minus kappa t plus tau b and if we write down this value in above formula we will get so this is n prime so if we replace n prime with these values we will get d kappa by ds into n so this is the same as this and uh, kappa will remain here and uh, we will replace dn by ds by n prime s is equal to minus kt plus tau b so agar isko multiply kar dhe kappa ke saath to we will get minus kappa square t plus tau kappa b so this is the value of beta triple prime of s and in particular what is beta triple prime of 0 in short hum isko likh rahe beta triple prime naught is equal to t kappa by ds at 0 n naught minus kappa naught square t naught plus t naught kappa naught b naught so what is b naught by normal at s is equal to 0 kappa naught is curvature at s is equal to 0 torsion tau naught at s is equal to 0 you know tangent curvature normal and the rate of change of curvature at s is equal to 0 so these are all the information that we have already studied in the frame frame field or in the frame formulas or if this beta triple prime 0 is this value then we will put it here after that we have beta prime 0, beta double prime 0 and beta triple prime 0 ki values are coming we will put it here so what will it come to us so what is beta of s so this is equal to approximately equal to beta of 0 it remains the same plus s into beta prime of 0 this is equal to s t naught plus s into beta double prime of 0 so what is beta double prime of 0 this is equal to kappa naught n naught plus s cube by 3 factorial beta triple prime of 0 so this is equal to d kappa by ds at 0 n naught minus kappa naught square t naught plus tau naught kappa naught b naught so if I in tamam values mein t naught ko common le lu, n naught ko common le lu, aur phir b naught ko common le lu, to mere paas kuch is kisam ki values a jayengi. So this is approximately equal to beta of 0 plus t naught. So what are the values of t naught? So s aur yahan se mare paas plus s cube by 3 factorial minus kappa naught square t naught so that's the value t naught and that's the second value t naught next we can write down the value of b naught so this term may be not near this term may be not near so there is only one b naught so it is s cube by 3 factorial tau naught kappa naught plus so what are the 
values for n naught so there is one coefficient of n naught here so this is s squared by 2 kappa naught and there is another over here plus s cube by 3 factorial d kappa by ds at 0 whole multiplied by n naught so once again there is a mistake there is no t naught here so that's the approximation of the curve beta of s in terms of t naught b naught and n naught aur iske jo coefficients hai wo aap dekh sakte hain usme s variable hai kyunki it depends on the variable jaise jaise s ki value change karenge ye approximation aapke paas change hogi so it depends on s and it depends on the curvature and torsion so curvature, torsion or tangent normal, binormal ki terms mein humne is approximation ko lik diya. Now there is one more important thing. We have seen that this S is very small. So jase jase hum kisi bhi point on the curve pe hai let's say. To agar this is s is equal to 0 point on the curve or agar mein kisi bhi neighborhood mein hoon so let's say this is curve going on in like this this is the point on the curve corresponding to s is equal to 0 or in other words this is uh, beta of 0 so if s is very very small so there is one point beta of s and we are approximating this value on the curve so if s is very very small then the powers of s let's say s cube and other terms they will be very very small so hum kya karte hain hum har term mein se t naught ke saath jo coefficient hai is mein jo higher power ki terms hain usko hum ignore kar dete hain so is case mein for example hum s cube ko ignore kar denge is b naught ke saath sirf ek term aa rahi hai to hum kisi ko ignore nahi kar sakte इस टर्म n नॉट में हमारे पास एक टर्म आ रही है s क्यूब के साथ तो हम इसको इग्नोर कर देंगे अगर इन तीन इन दो टर्म्स को सो वी इग्नोर दिस टर्म एंड वी इग्नोर दिस टर्म बिकॉज दीज आर हायर पावर्स ऑफ s सो वी कैन इजीली इग्नोर देम एंड वी गेट द फॉलोइंग अप्रोक्सीमेशन ऑफ द कर्व जो हायर पावर्स थी s की वो हमने इग्नोर कर दिए और हमारे पास ये अप्रोक्सीमेशन आ गई है बेसिकली एंड दिस अप्रोक्सीमेशन इज कॉल्ड बीटा हेड ऑफ एस एंड इज कॉल्ड फ्रेने अप्रोक्सीमेशन ऑफ बीटा नियर एस अभी तक हमने जो अप्रोक्सीमेशन की है वो एस इज इक्वल टू जीरो के अराउंड है एंड वी कैन डू बेसिकली दिस अप्रोक्सीमेशन फॉर एनी पॉइंट एस नॉट अदर देन एस इज इक्वल टू जीरो and uh, how do we do that jo taylor series hai wo around any point s naught is given by f of x is equal to f of s naught plus f prime of s naught into s minus s naught f double prime of s naught into s minus s naught square by 2 plus f triple prime of s naught into s minus s naught cube by 3 factorial up to so on is mein hum dekh sakte hain agar s naught is equal to 0 put kare to you will get the same taylor series that we used earlier and uh, if we follow the same procedure that we followed then you will see that the frenet approximation of the curve at any point is given like this and uh, i am leaving this as an exercise so kya karenge aap aapne is taylor series ko use karna aur frenet formulas ko use karna frenet formulas mein koi change nahi aayegi just s is equal to 0 ki jagah aap s is equal to s not put karenge aur is tamam ke baad aapke paas jo frenet approximation hai curve ki beta hat of s not is basically equal to this expression
and uh, I'm leaving this as an exercise. So we don't need this S anymore because uh, so beta hat of S naught is basically beta hat of S naught. Okay, so now what is important? We have seen that at any point S naught we can approximate a curve. Now the important thing is if I have a curve, let's say this trail is basically a curve. So let's assume. So we can assume that corresponding to every point on the curve, I have a frame. So as you move along the curve, then you will have a frame and at each and every point on the curve. So till the end point. So this is the end point of the curve, which is the end point corresponding to the end point of the domain. So corresponding to every point on the curve, I have this frame, TBN. I have the Frenet frame. I have the Frenet formula at each and every point. And I can approximate at each and every point the curve using the Frenet approximation. So this is possible at each and every point on the curve. So for example, अगर मेरे पास कोई सी भी कर्व गिवन है थ्री डायमेंशन में सो लेट्स से दिस इज ए कर्व इन थ्री डायमेंशन देन एज आई मूव सो दिस टी इज बेसिकली द पैरामीटर सो एज आई मूव द वैल्यूज ऑफ टी आई विल बी मूविंग अलॉन्ग द कर्व सो जैसे जैसे मैं टी की वैल्यूज को इंक्रीज करूंगा आई विल बी मूविंग अलॉन्ग द कर्व और जैसा कि आप देख सकते हैं एज आई एम मूविंग अलॉन्ग द कर्व आई एम गेटिंग this normal vector, tangent vector and binormal vector as I move across this curve. And so I can do the same computations which we have done at any point S0 I can do the same computations at each and every point on the curve. So I can approximate each and every point of the curve. So I can use this scale to increase the size of this frame. And I can also increase the size of the curve. So this is important. So this file will be available with the lecture notes. So all you need to do is install this software called CDF player and once you install the software then you can easily open this file and uh, basically you can use these commands to see for yourself how moving along the curve you will get a frame, a frame at each and every point of the curve. And uh, this software CDF player is also available online for free at the Wolfram Mathematica website. So what we have done so far? So we have done the following. Corresponding to every point on the curve, I can approximate the value of the curve corresponding to that point. So, we had the computations in the beginning of the curve, it was equal to 0. After that, we said that if a point is in the neighborhood of any point on the curve, S0, then I can do the same computations. And uh, since corresponding to every point on the curve, there is a tangent normal and binormal. So, there is a frame of frame field at each and every point on the curve. So, that is why I can approximate and I can write down the approximation corresponding to every point in terms of the tangent, binormal, normal vectors, torsion and curvature. So, abhi tak humne approximate kiya hai curve ko in terms of these geometrical properties of the curves. So, ab hum dekhte hain ke is approximation ka meaning kya hai. So, let's consider 
this approximation this beta hat is approximation of the curve near s is equal to 0 so we can see that this is 0 so this is the approximation of the curve near s is equal to 0 so s is a point very very close to 0 so let's say main sirf aur sirf first two terms ko consider karta hu so let's consider the Frenet approximation which is very very rough approximation kyunki main isko ignore kar deta hu aur third term hai isko bhi ignore kar raha hu so let's consider for a moment that we are ignoring the last two terms and we are just writing down the first two terms now what is beta of 0 it's a point on the curve so this is beta of 0 so this is the curve beta and this this point is basically beta of 0 it's a point on the curve what is s it's a variable it's a parameter and what is t naught t naught is basically tangent to the curve at point beta of 0 so in this picture we can see that it will be a unit vector in the direction of this t naught so this basically is t naught vector it's a unit vector in the direction of tangent so what happens if I multiply t naught with a number so multiplying so basically s is a number so if I multiply s with this t naught which is a vector I will get a vector which is basically either it's uh, greater in the length to t naught or it is less in the length to t naught so dono mein se koi ek baat ho sakti hai depending on the value of s so I will get this s t naught so let's say this vector is s t naught so the length here to here is the length of the vector s t naught and so agar hum revise kare humne line ki equation find out ki thi is b naught is a fixed point t naught is a fixed vector and s is parameter so this is parameter so if you remember what is the equation of a line passing through a point and parallel to vector q it was the same as p plus q t and this t is the parameter it's very similar to this and so what is this expression if I ignore the last two terms the first two terms will give me a line passing through point beta of 0 and parallel to the tangent vector in fact unit tangent vector and so the approximation of the curve at point s which is very close to sorry this is point s at point s which is very close to 0 is in fact a straight line and what is this the straight line can be calculated from b of 0 plus s t naught so that's how you calculate this straight line which is the very rough approximation of the curve near the point s is equal to 0 so the curve defined by s goes to beta of 0 plus s t naught is the tangent line to beta at s is equal to 0 so basically it's not unit tangent vector it's the tangent line which means it is a line containing point beta of 0 and is parallel to the unit tangent vector so that is tangent line it is the best linear approximation to beta near beta of 0 so near beta of 0 means once again a point which is very very close to s is equal to 0 s is a point very very close to s is equal to 0 or is point pe beta of s ki jo approximation hai linear approximation wo hamare paas kya hai beta of 0 plus s t naught 
اب اس کو لینئر اپروکسیمیشن ہم کیوں کہہ رہے ہیں کیونکہ اس میں اس کی پاور ٹو اور تھری اور ہائر پاورز نہیں آ رہی سو اٹس ای لینئر فنکشن اس میں اس کی یا پیرامیٹر کی جتنی بھی پاورز ہیں وہ ون ہے اس میں ٹو یا تھری یا ہائر پاورز نہیں آ رہی سو اٹس ای لینئر اپروکسیمیشن آف دس کرف بیٹا نیئر اس از ایکول ٹو زیرو نیکسٹ ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ if I ignore the last term and just consider the first three terms then what is this geometrically so geometrically this is a quadratic function a function involving one and two powers of the parameter so it's a quadratic function and in particular it defines a parabola so if you remember that if you consider a function like uh, ax plus bx square plus c then it gives me a parabola in plane and this is basically a parabola in which plane a plane decided by t naught and n naught so what is t naught here so t naught is given here and what is n naught n naught is given here and what is the plane that we are talking about so this is the plane اس پلین کی بات ہو رہی ہے decided by or defined by t naught and n naught اس پلین میں یہ جو approximation ہے curve beta of s کی with this quadratic function is a parabola and this plane decided by t naught and n naught is basically called oscillating plane and uh, this parabola will something like this and this will be contained and this will be contained in this plane okay so that is the approximation of the curve when you only consider the first three terms and ignore the last term this is basically a parabola contained in the osculating plane now let's see what are plane curves ابھی ہم نے پیرابولا کی بات کی which is contained in the plane what are the curves which are not contained in the plane so this is example of a curve which cannot be contained in the plane so it is curved in space in such a way that there is no plane containing this curve and uh, we also know that helix is also one of the examples of the curve which cannot be contained in a plane so it's not a planar curve so what is a planar curve a curve which is contained in a plane in R3 is called a planar curve and uh, once again going back this parabola is a planar curve which is contained in the osculating plane so this approximation of the curve by just considering the first three terms of the Frenet approximation and ignoring the last term is basically a parabola in the osculating plane and it's a planar curve now let's see what happens if I consider all of the terms so ignoring the rest of the terms so we are ignoring these terms and just consider these terms okay then the approximation is a curve which is moving the parabola in the third dimension now let's see as we have seen that this is the osculating plane so in this osculating plane the approximation if I consider the first three terms it's a parabola so as I said that it is something like this now what happens if I consider this term the term containing the third power of s and also containing b naught so this b naught is important because we are now 
considering the third dimension. So before that we were only considering T naught and N naught. So the curve was, that's why the curve was contained, the approximation of the curve was contained in the plane. Now we have the third dimension. B naught is a vector. Is say aap kisi number ko tau naught, kappa naught, s cube by 3, ye ek number hai, isko B naught se multiply karenge, aur uska effect bhi aega. So basically, aap isko lift kar rahe hai. So is curve ko aap lift kar rahe hai, yun samal lehe, aap isko move kar rahe hai. Is point se pakad ke, agar aap isko lift kar rahe hai, to aap ke paas ye approximation a jayegi, which is given over here. So this is beta hat of S with all the four terms taken. So what is this approximation? So this, this point beta hat of S is the approximation of beta of S. So we don't know where is the curve. So maybe the curve is somewhere going like this, very very close to this point. So we don't know. So maybe this is the actual curve. So this is the actual curve. But this is, you can see that this is beta of S. And this is very, very close to beta hat of S. And so this is the approximation of the curve. So that's what it means that if you approximate a curve by Taylor series and then write it down in terms of the Frenne frame and use the Frenne frame formulas and then you see that it is in fact given like this. Now the next thing is we have seen that what is a planar curve. A planar curve is a curve which is contained in a plane in 3D and uh, what is a curve which is not a planar curve? which cannot be contained in a plane. So this is a planar curve as it is basically tilted but we can easily find a plane. We can easily find a plane containing this curve. So it is a planar curve and it is not a planar curve. But how we can decide that a curve is planar curve or a curve is not a planar curve? because we have asserted that uh, abhi tak joh humne properties calculate ki hai torsion, curvature, normal, tangent and binormal ye tamam ki tamam curve ki geometry ko express karti hai so is it possible ki mein in terms of these notions mein is cheez ko express kar sakun ki kab curve planar hogi aur kab curve planar nahi hogi and the answer is yes it is possible I can write down the following statement. So let beta be a curve in R3 with positive curvature. So this thing is important. So we are only ignoring one case with curvature equal to 0. And we have seen that when uh, kappa is equal to 0, if and only if beta is line. So I am leaving this as an exercise you can easily prove that this is possible. If k is 0, then b is a line. So we are just ignoring the line case. And uh, we are assuming that kappa is greater than 0. Then beta is a plane curve if and only if torsion of the curve is 0. So basically, the torsion calculates or torsion measures the amount in which the curve is not planar. So, agar torsion zero hai, to ye curve totally plane mein contained hai. Agar torsion thoda sa kam hai, to planar to nahi hai, lekin close to planar curve hai. Or agar torsion bohut zyada hai, then the curve is very, very not planar. In other words, it's very, very far from contained in a plane. So let's prove this statement that uh, let beta be a curve in R3 with positive curvature then beta is a plane curve if and only if torsion is 0. So there is 
if and only if involved here. So let's first assume that beta is plane curve and uh, we will prove that so to prove is torsion is equal to zero and how to prove that torsion is equal to zero and since beta is a plane curve so it is contained in this plane then there exists a point P and a vector Q so this implies there exist point P on plane and vector Q perpendicular to plane such that beta of S minus P is perpendicular to Q. Now P and Q are fixed and their derivative is zero and beta of s is not fixed it's a variable quantity and its derivative will not be equal to zero so differentiating will give us beta prime of s the derivative of p zero dot q plus beta of s dot q prime and uh, this is equal to zero but we know that this is basically zero so what do we get so we get that beta prime of s dot q is zero and this implies that tangent vector so what is beta prime if beta is a unit speed curve then it is tangent vector unit tangent vector so that's the first thing we get. Secondly, differentiating again. So differentiating again, we get beta double prime s dot q is equal to zero. And we can divide it. Since uh, the curvature is greater than zero, I can divide it by curvature and dot equal to zero. And this implies that n dot q is equal to 0. So the point is this q is perpendicular to both n and t and uh, if there is this q and it is perpendicular to both n and t and we also know that t cross n is a vector which is perpendicular to both t and n then we can see that so this implies that the binormal vector which is t cross n is basically parallel to the vector q and so this implies that b is equal to q divided by norm of q because q may or may not be unit so we normalize it and make it a unit vector and so this implies that beta prime is zero and if beta prime is zero then we know that beta prime is equal to torsion n and this implies that torsion is equal to zero because n cannot be equal to zero so next let's see how to prove the converse of the statement so what is the converse of the statement if the torsion of the curve is zero then we have to show that so to show is it is a plane curve so if torsion is zero then this implies that b prime which is equal to minus tau n so b prime is zero now consider we have a trick to prove this part so we consider a function f of s which is equal to beta of s minus beta of 0 dot b or basically agar hum ye show kar de, that f of s is 0 then this will imply that beta of s minus beta of 0 dot b is 0 
and this implies that beta of s is always contained in a space which is perpendicular to the binormal vector. So this implies beta of s is contained in plane perpendicular to B and containing B of 0. So if we can show that, then we are done. Now what is F prime? So F prime of S is equal to beta prime of S dot B. What is beta prime of S? This is T dot B is equal to 0 and we also know that f of 0 is 0. So, if you have 0, rakhe, to beta of 0 minus beta of 0 is 0. Ho jayega. So, f of 0 is 0. And this implies that f of s is 0. And uh, basically, if you integrate this function and f of 0 is 0, then we can use that the integral of this f prime of s is equal to 0 is a constant but since f of 0 is 0, so f of s is 0. So, I am leaving this step as an exercise. And so, this implies that beta of s minus beta of 0 dot p is equal to 0 and so, the curve is planar curve. So, what is torsion? Torsion gives you measure of how much a curve is not planar. If torsion is 0, then it is a plane curve and if torsion is non-zero, then it is not a planar curve and if torsion is higher, then the curve is bending too much in space and it is very far from being a plane curve. So, next time we will be continuing this Frenet approximation and there will be one or two more results in interpreting this Frenet approximation and to determine how the geometrical properties can be obtained from this Frenet approximation. And we will also start the new topic called the arbitrary speed curves. As a matter of fact, we will be translating the whole geometrical discussion of the curve from unit speed curves to in general curves. So, we have two lectures that we assume that we have two curves and we have unit speed curves. But in this section, we have arbitrary speed curves. Now, we will drop this assumption and we will discuss the properties ko discuss karenge for general curves. This is the end of the lecture. Thank you very much and Allah Hafiz.